Uh, Mr. Stephen Orfe is the general manager at PCI Security Standards Council. Mr. Orfe, you're now recognized for your testimony. Thank you, sir. Good morning. My name is Stephen Orfe. I'm the general manager of the PCI Security Standards Council. I had the privilege of leading a talented and deeply committed membership organization that is responsible for the developing and maintaining of the global data security standards for the payment card industry. Our approach combines people, process, and technology. Continuous effort in applying our standards is the best line of defense against organized crime, state-funded actors, and criminals who threaten our way of life and attempt to undermine our confidence in the financial system. Everyone has been victimized by these criminals, and we know the very real harm caused by breaches. Developing standards to protect payment card data is something the private sector, and specifically PCI, is uniquely qualified to do. Consumers are understandably upset when their payment card data is put at risk. The Council was created to proactively protect consumers' payment card data. Our community of over 1,000 of the world's leading businesses is tackling data security challenges from simple issues. For example, the word password is still one of the most commonly used passwords, and to complex issues like encryption. Our standards are a solid foundation for a multi-layered security approach. We aim to remove payment card data if it is no longer needed. Simply put, if you don't need it, don't store it. If it's needed, then protect it and reduce the incentives for criminals to steal. And here's how we do that. The data security standard is built on 12 principles covering everything from logical to physical security and much more. It's updated regularly through feedback from our global community. We manage eight other standards that cover card production, pin entry devices, payment applications, and much, much more. We work on technologies, best practices, and provide market guidance. We have laboratories to vet solutions that we list on our website. All of our information is free. Our mission is to educate, empower, and protect. Now, our end game strategy is to devalue the data so that it is useless in the hands of the bad guys. We have three technologies that will allow us to do so. EMV at the point of sale, point to point encryption, and tokenization. When bundled and implemented properly, the data becomes useless, then there's no reason to break in. That's why the council supports adoption of EMV in the US through organizations such as the EMV Migration Forum and other standards, and our standards support EMV today in other worldwide markets. But EMV chip is not a silver bullet. Additional controls are needed to protect the integrity of payments online and in other channels. This includes encryption, tamper-resistant devices, malware protection, network monitoring, and more. All are vital parts of the PCI standards. Effective security requires more than just standards, for standards without supporting programs are just tools, not solutions. The Council's training and certification programs have educated tens of thousands of security professionals and make it easier for businesses to choose products that have been lab tested, certified, and as secured. Finally, we conduct global campaigns to raise awareness of payment card security. The committee's leadership on this critical issue is important, and there are clear ways in which the federal government can help. For example, by leading stronger cooperative law enforcement efforts worldwide, by encouraging stiff penalties for these crimes, and recent initiatives on information sharing are also proving to be invaluable. The Council is an active collaborator with government. We work with NIST, DHS, Treasury, Secret Service, and many other government entities, including global law enforcement, such as Interpol and Europol. In conclusion, payment card security is complex. Silver bullet solutions do not exist. Unilateral action is usually a disappointment. Alliances, 
partnerships, information sharing, and collaboration between the public and private sector is critical. The PCI Council stands ready and willing to do more to combat global cyber crimes that threaten our way of life and confidence in the financial systems of the world. We thank the committee for taking a leadership role and seeking solutions to one of the largest security concerns of our time. Thank you. Thank yeah, you. But, but it's still a target for the, uh, the, the hacker to go into the retail, or any of them, not just medical or whatever. The hospital keeps that information too, I guess, for, as a data source where they'll go try to breach it, and they won't be going to the retail to use it, but they'll be doing it online. So it's still a target, maybe even a larger target. Is that true now with the chip? Gee, my time's going quick. Is it a larger target because of that as well? I think it's important that we recognize that chip technology is really designed to button down the point of sale to defend against counterfeit and lost and stolen. Okay. It is but one critical layer of security. Uh, there are other technologies that have been referenced in testimony here today, such as point-to-point -point encryption and tokenization that will protect that data from the cyber breach you're referencing, Congressman. Okay. I'd like to uh, ask Stephen Orphy. Uh, Given, given your organization's experience in establishing data security protocols and procedures, of what would you say are the most important aspects of a company's data security plan? And other, in other words, what is the most important thing that a company could do to protect uh, their customers, to protect their company against uh, data breaches? Uh, thank you, Congresswoman, for that question. I think what's most important uh, is the PCI standard is, in, in our view, the best defense against cyber criminal attacks. It really becomes a question of vigilance and being methodical and disciplined in your approach and, and looking at and, and paying special attention to the fundamentals, doing the blocking and tackling, looking at the physical and logical security. It's day in and day out. It needs to be 24-7. It needs to be built into the DNA of an organization from the CEO right down to the working level. Okay, uh, thank you. And I've just got a few seconds left. Just one comment. Uh, Mr. Orfe, I'm disappointed that you gave everybody my password to my computers, but <laughs> <laughs> with, with that, I yield back. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Gentleman yields back and better put a fraud alert on all of his uh, credit cards. Uh, Chair, now we're uh, I'm hiding back, uh, back here. But uh, I, I, real quickly, while we're on the breaches, um, I'd be remiss to say that uh, Mr. Garrett's credit card has now purchased at least three things online and is available widely uh, on a Russian website. But uh, the. <laughs> Uh, in all seriousness, though, I, I mean, that is the concern all of us have, right? You know, when, when we're calling in somewhere or buying something online uh, in a very um, uh, trans, uh, transient kind of economy that we have, uh, I think we all have a legitimate and serious concern. But I, I'm, I'm curious, Mr. Orphy, from your perspective, have you evaluated how many breaches, breached companies um, are in compliance with the, your PCI standards um, at the time of their breach or have they, have they had those standards and then it's caused them to take action or did they have them already and, and they still were breached? Well, what I would reference is the Verizon report, which is an objective third party that looks at the data for breaches for the past 10 years. And the findings, there's two significant data points that I would give you, Congressman. One is that 99.9% .9 of the breaches that have occurred were preventable and covered by the PCI standard. The second point is that um, I, I think that the, 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 the PCI standard has done a very effective job and there hasn't been one single compromise where the merchant or the entity was found in compliance. Okay. Um, I, as well. But I mean, are you saying that we're going to see more, you know, pocket thieves out there? I mean, no, no, no. I'm saying that fraudsters will develop new and innovative ways to crack the chip and commit fraud. Is that happening? Uh, Congressman in Duffy, if I may, uh, may, the chip will defend against counterfeit, lost, and stolen at the point of sale. It will button down the point of sale of physical environment. Once that environment is secured, fraud will then move to the card not present environment. Right. It's what we observe in the Asia Pacific and European theaters who've had chip technology. Now, the chip technology is you cannot clone it. So what we'll see is it will migrate. 
So how far away are we from tokenization for online purchases? Tokenization is a technology that's been around for 10 years. Uh, and now the acquiring community and technology vendors are, and the price points have come down. So point-to-point -point encryption coupled with tokenization, coupled with EMV at the point of sale, is how we get to devaluing the data so that it's useless. So with card not, to be clear, so when we have, when we have a, uh, a chip, um, does a retailer, are they able to uh, maintain data um, about the card in their database if you, if you just have a chip card? as opposed to a, a magnetic strip? There's, again, Congressman, the chip is just going to work at the point of sale. How that merchant stores data... Uh, can they store... So my question is, listen, we've heard about all the retailers who've had data breaches. If we migrate to the exclusive uh, use of chips, does that mean that retailers are no longer keeping personal consumer data in their databases, which no, means no, they're sir. not at risk to have breaches any longer? No, again, it's just taking off the threat at the point of sale. So just, it's a critical layer, but it's not a silver bullet. But on the back end, retailers in, still in keep the back end of the store, the information could be replaced, though, by tokenization, could be protected by point-to-point. -point Do you have encryption. recommendations on how long retailers are, are, are recommended of keeping uh, financial information about consumers? How long, should they, how long should a retailer keep that information? It's really not necessary to keep that information. Um, let me ask Mr. Arfi, um, you know that the end of your testimony that not a single company has been found to be compliant at the time of their breach. But in many cases, firms that have been breached were at one point PCI compliant how does your compliance framework lend itself, if, if at all, to ongoing monitoring of PCI compliance? And what role does the PCI play in monitoring compliance? And thank you for that question. Yes, 99.9% um, of the compromises were preventable and covered by the standard. And um, if, you, if you think about uh, our, our standard, what we're advocating is a move away from compliance to a risk-based approach. And we are advocating vigilance and discipline and, and being methodical in paying close adherence to the standard. Security is a 24 by 7 responsibility. It's not a, a matter of compliance. You know, what we see happens is a company works diligently to bring its organization into compliance. Mm -hmm. They high-five each other on Thursday, and Friday the environment starts to deteriorate. So it's about being disciplined, methodical, and paying attention and, and to the fundamentals, sir. Thank you. Good thing for Mr. Orphy, unless here in this country we go down this path where we continue to work on this problem and find solutions to it, uh, aren't we exposing our consumers and our families and our businesses to more cyber risk uh, if Europe is ahead of us and other developed countries or uh, parts of the world are ahead of us? Uh, may I answer that question? Okay. Yeah, I think the technology is going to evolve here and we'll have good answers, particularly mobile will be the future of payments. Mm -hmm. But I think what's really key is this information sharing effort that's in progress right now. Being able to collect that information, translate it so it's actionable intelligence, and then that'll allow us to preempt attacks from organized crime, rogue states, mm -hmm. and state-funded actors. Thank you all very much. appreciate it. Thank you, Mr. Chair. You're my time. Thank the gentleman. Now the gentleman. Anybody else want to add on that? Well, I think the fundamentals of the PCI standard are applicable across all vertical markets. I also share your concern in my discussions with law enforcement that the healthcare systems in particular will be the next big target. Um, protecting that data and, and following adherence to the PCI standard would, be, would benefit those industries as well. So the end game really is you devalue the data so that it's useless in the hands of criminals. And the three technologies that we've talked about today do exactly that. EMV at the point of sale, point-to-point -point encryption, and tokenization. You bundle those correctly, you implement it properly, the value is useless. There's no reason to break in, and even if you did, whatever you stole, you can't use it anywhere else. Okay.